I've had one too many arguments with people online about solar mobility and why it's a good idea. This may seem obvious to a lot of you. It's like you can't create your own fuel with hydrogen vehicles like on board the vehicle itself. You can't do that with gasoline vehicles. But suddenly, when we now have the option to switch to a full battery electric vehicle that is capable of recharging itself off of sunlight, a bunch of people go, eh, well, because the solar panels don't give you 400 miles a day, it's not even worth adding to the vehicle. It's just too expensive when in actuality a couple hundred watts of solar is actually quite trivial to the overall price of the vehicle. The main thing is just designing the vehicle to maximize solar exposure and to maximize miles per kilowatt hour. Obviously, if you do something silly like a Fisker Ocean which is getting like two miles per kilowatt hour and just has a tiny little solar panel on top, yeah, that's not going to do very much. But if you're smart about it like Aptera or now with Tello pursuing a similar concept, you can actually get meaningful energy or meaningful range out of those solar cells. I can't believe I have to explain this, but I thought I would break down the top three main inherent advantages of solar mobility that a lot of people don't think about as being that useful. Number one, phantom drain becomes phantom gain. There's all kinds of scenarios in which you're not even driving your car within a single day. But I guarantee you there's still a ton of situations where your car is sitting in sunlight. Whether this be airport parking, you know, you go on a trip and your vehicle is just sitting out in an empty parking lot for days at a time, or maybe it's at your business. You know, a lot of people are just driving to the same place back and forth every day, and at your workplace, your vehicle just sits there collecting sun, deteriorating all day, unless you maximize it with solar technology. And now, even if it's not giving you a ton of range back over the course of your workday, it's still powering all of these idling features that that electric vehicles often have running in the background. It could be cabin overheat protection, making sure your cabin stays cool in direct sunlight. It could be sentry mode features, you know, trying to keep all of your belongings safe on the inside. All of these passive features, you know, controlling the car from your mobile app, they use energy. It has to wake up a computer or it has to wake up an HVAC system or wake up all of the separate cameras on the vehicle looking for motion. So our EVs, whether they have solar or not, are gonna be using power when they're just sitting around, especially in sunlight, actually, that's when they really start getting hot, and you don't want the inside of your vehicle sitting all day at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not good for the longevity, so making sure that at least the solar on the vehicle can idly power all of those passive systems so that, at the very least, you can come out to your vehicle at the end of the workday and the battery has not gone down. In fact, if it's a really efficient vehicle, like an Aptera, it will actually have gone up. And that brings me to best use case number two two of solar mobility, it's the easiest form of charging. If you're in the EV community, you've probably heard the expression ABC always be charging, right? Well, there's literally never been an easier form of charging because it takes no proactive measures. You know, in the future, when everybody is kind of accustomed to plugging in an EV, I think people are going to start to get a little bit annoyed by it. The same way our smartphones have adopted to inductive charging because people don't feel like grabbing the cable, plugging in the phone all the time. It doesn't sound like a very complicated action, but as you do it day in and day out, I actually think passive solar charging is a lot more likely to catch on than what a lot of people in the EV community seem to be in favor of, which I still don't really understand, but everyone seems to think that the future is going to involve AC charging everywhere. Like, every parking space at every grocery store is gonna have little Tesla destination chargers, and just anytime you park your car on the side of the road or in a parking lot, there will magically just be charging infrastructure eventually installed. I don't know who you think's gonna pay for all of the electricity or all of the equipment, but personally, I don't see that happening. But I do foresee a situation in which people get sick and tired of having to plug in their vehicle all the time, everywhere they go, or having to fast charge it. Plus, you know, there's a lot of people who don't have home charging as an option. They live in apartment buildings, or, like most Americans, they may have a garage, but it's full of crap. Their driveway gets filled with other vehicles, and the concept of having to install, you know, a Tesla wall connector on the outside of your house and then stretch the cable all the way to where your car is normally parked. Yeah, this gets old really fast. In fact, it actually prevents people from wanting to go EV because charging is one of those biggest hurdles people have to jump over. Most people are fine with the demo drive. They get in any EV and go, wow, it's quiet, it's fast. Look at how much room there is. What? There's no engine in the front. They go through all those works, but then the big hurdle is, ah, but what about the charging? I don't really have a good way to charge from home. 
home. I don't have a dryer outlet. Oh, now I gotta hire an electrician. Turns out my circuit breaker is out of date. Now I gotta update that, route the wiring all over here. All of that could just simply go away if we started building EVs to be far more efficient than they are today and also maximize their solar exposure so that eventually when people are considering going electric, you could tell them, oh, you don't really have to plug it in all that often because if you're driving between 20 and 40 miles a day, the EV is just gonna charge itself, which I'm not saying means you never plug it in, but it does mean you go a lot further between charges. Right now, there's already a lot of people who can't charge their EV from home and are just resulting to DC fast charging it once or twice a week as needed. It's not really an ideal solution, but a lot of people love EVs or maybe just hate paying for gas that much that they're willing to make that compromise. But with a solar powered EV, you could probably get down to only having to plug in once every couple of weeks or maybe every three weeks, especially if you consider that a lot of the time people don't necessarily drive 40 miles per day. Remember, that's the average. So there's probably weekends or holidays where the EV is still being able to rake in free electricity from sunlight, even though you're not driving it to work every single day. The sun doesn't miss a single day of work. So it makes the transition to electrification a lot easier if you don't have to think about how am I going to charge this thing? It's always charging. You know, it's just charging whether you need it to or not. And that brings me to number three. Another reason a lot of people I think would appreciate solar mobility is locking in electricity costs. There's no way around it. If you're interested in buying a vehicle, whether it has three or four wheels, there are fixed and variable costs involved. Like the purchase price of the vehicle, okay, that's a fixed cost. You know, if you're financing it, you're going to decide what the monthly payment is, or if you're just paying in cash, that's when hopefully the company is transparent and tells you, okay, here's the final purchase price. Here's all the taxes, registration, and fees. But after you get through all of those fixed costs of a vehicle, there are variable costs. And that's what I think solar mobility could really substantially reduce and maybe make people willing to pay a premium for vehicles that have that solar mobility as an option. Because I can attest as someone who has fully taken advantage of Tesla's referral program that if you can charge for free, if you don't have to pay extra to make another road trip or to visit some friends or visit some family members that are a little far away, if you know that the variable costs are incredibly low or non-existent, you'll be much more likely to go out and do those adventurous things or take more trips overall. It does a completely different mental process in your brain to know that, oh, we could go all the way out there and it won't cost us anything extra because the car is charging itself for free. You know, electricity prices are consistently going up. Even as more and more people are buying solar for their homes, utility companies are quickly figuring out that just cutting people's bill to nothing is not sustainable because we still have a grid, we still have all of this infrastructure, and all of that still needs to be maintained. It's not getting cheaper to keep all those power lines around. So especially in huge markets like California, which has more people than Australia or Canada, they've redesigned the solar metering system now to the point that it's not even really worth it anymore because any excess solar you produce, the grid will take and give you next to nothing back for it. So if you don't buy batteries to go along with your solar package, then it's almost not worth considering. Like the solar panels will never actually pay for themselves. But this creates a really complicated finance question because it's like, okay, how much do the solar panels cost to install on the roof? You know, that involves labor, that involves permitting. Sometimes it takes people four to six months just for the utility company to approve and certify that the solar panels were installed correctly. So in the meantime, your panels are just sitting up there doing nothing. And then if you buy batteries for that system, that increases the overall cost, which pushes out the break even point. So that's why solar installations in many places have gone way, way down because the financial savings are not really what they used to be as the utility companies have figured out. No, we can't afford to just have nobody pay their electric bill anymore. We need everybody to keep paying something, even if you've got solar on your roof. So with all of those complications of planning and city officials needing to come out and approve each system, I think we could simplify a lot of this by just making sure our EVs use a lot less energy than they're currently using and also can charge themselves with solar. Then they don't have to be permitted, then they don't have to be approved, and then you've got your panels and your battery system all together integrated in one. And you can make sure that when you drive that EV to other destinations, maybe you go on a camping trip, maybe you're visiting friends and family, it doesn't matter, you're still getting the energy produced from those solar panels. Whereas if you buy a solar package for your house, you're only getting that energy when you charge from home. And you're really only saving money in the future if you buy batteries to go along with that 
system, or you could just have an EV that does it all, and you can take that whole package with you, whether or not you live in that house for 30 years, or whether you live in an apartment where you don't really have the option to buy solar panels and put them on your roof. That's overall why I think there will be tremendous demand for solar mobility in the future. It's just going to take a radical rethinking of vehicle design. Thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. And thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.